What's up? I'm an AI consultant for scientists, so I help scientists improve their research with AI. And recently I had this great opportunity to work with this group out in Northern California where they flew a drone all over the state and it collected tons of information about the atmosphere. Particularly, they're looking at fluorocarbons, which I don't know a lot about. They're in refrigerants, they're really nasty, but also really useful. Um, and so they produced these fantastic data set uh, over both a large space and they did it every day for a long time, so it's over space and time. Uh, what they want to do is kind of extrapolate this data set to apply to nearby locations and project it forward in time. So we want to have predictive abilities that go out in space and take into account all the terrain elements of that space, but also something that we can project forward in time. So this is a great challenge for AI because we have a nice data set, but how do we think about both of those spatio-temporal elements? Well, let me give you a quick overview of the model I built for them. So our input data looks like this. It's X, Y, Z dimensions, but it's also on the vertical axis here over time. So four dimensions there, but then it's a little bit more complicated because the drone had a lot of sensors on board. So each one of our points, we actually collected like 101 different sensor variables. I know, craziness. Not all of them ended up being useful and we'll get into that later, but uh, from our input data, I first run this through a pre-trained CNN. And so CNNs are great at capturing spatial relationships. They're phenomenal. It was, without a question, this is the right idea for processing spatial dependencies, but they don't do anything about time. So you can see I separate the time steps here and each time step separately goes through a CNN. This outputs an embedding, and embeddings have been fabulously successful at pipelining neural networks together. So we go from the CNN into an embedding, which is totally a tunable hyperparameter, we can adjust the size of this, uh, into an LSTM. And this kind of, we, we treat this embedding as a sentence. We kind of imagine that uh, as this evolves over time, this is equivalent to the cat went to the bar. Uh, and we, we process this through the LSTM to get the spatial relationships, and then we can predict forward in time uh, however far we want, given the kind of the inherent structure of the LSTM. But then we get our final predictions, and we actually output 10 different predictions for like uh, aerosol mixing properties. Uh, these are the outputs they were interested in uh, for each one of our spatio-temporal locations. So we have tons of predictions because there's 10 times our entire input size. So in the end, we go from 101 inputs at every point to 10, uh, you know, floating point outputs at every at every point. Of course, the model itself is actually a little bit more complicated. As I iterated on my drawings here, we actually break up the tiles into three-dimensional <laughs> little tile sequences. And then this allows us to have more sentences for better fine tuning of a bi-directional LSTM. We throw attention in there because attention is fabulously successful and uh, get our outputs that way. Uh, and future videos also get into some of the pre-processing. So if you like AI and how it's used by scientists, maybe give me a follow. See ya.